Hi, Kevin Coop here, and this is FaceTime with the Content Guy. So I've just gone through an experience which is uh, sort of speaks some ways uh, in which retailing has changed, not just for retailers, but also for consumers. So like a lot of guys, right, I've always carried around a big old wallet, you know, the same kind of wallet my dad used to carry, right? And it's sort of stuffed with things. It's got, you know, not because I have a lot of money, God knows, but it's got some credit cards in there, and it's got my driver's license, and it's got frequent shopper cards, and it's got frequent flyer cards, and hotel cards, and insurance cards, and, you know, it's just one card after another. And it's usually got, you know, a bunch of receipts in there, and it's just, oh, it's just, it's just, you know, it's awful. I'm amazed, that, you know, it gets a thick. I'm amazed I don't get sciatica from sitting on it all the time. But then to a random sort of chain of events, eh, things changed a little bit. Last summer, I was interviewing Ace Atkins, the mystery novelist, and he had a shirt on, which I thought was kind of interesting, and it had a, a logo that I did not recognize, small, almost imperceptible. But I wanted to add a little specificity and color to, this, to the story that I was doing. So what I ended up, I, I sort of did a little research, and I found out that it was made by a company called Ball and Buck, which sort of specializes in leather goods and outerwear, uh, all made in the USA. While I was on the Ball and, Ball and Buck site, I noticed that they were advertising a new wallet, which they said was really, really thin, would, call, would um, hold all the cards you could possibly want, uh, made with the finest leather available in the United States. And uh, what was interesting about it, beyond the fact that you know, it looked kind of like it was something different, but what was really interesting to me about it is that they weren't making it yet. In fact, they were going through a Kickstarter campaign. They were not going to make the wallet until it had been determined that there was enough consumer interest to make it worthwhile. Um, and basically what they were looking for over a six-week period of time is they wanted to get $10,000 worth of orders. And this is at 48 bucks a wallet. The wallet now retails on the site uh, for $88. So I figured, what the heck, right? Well, I could give it a shot. So I did. I placed my order. Interestingly enough, the order went through Amazon.com. They handled all the, the fulfillment in terms of the economics of the situation. And I thought this was kind of interesting. Well, and this funding period was six weeks long. And during that six weeks, they actually got uh, $61,000 plus. On it, and they were only looking for $10,000. So needless to say, there was customer interest. Now, that was about two months ago. This week... Okay, they said it was going to take this long. The wallet showed up in this envelope. And I have to tell you, it's a revelation. It is so small. And it's great because basically it carries my driver's license. It carries a business credit card. It carries a debit card for my, um, basically, my personal account and my business account. And then I have an insurance card in here and a zip car card and my Costco card. Because for some reason there's no app. Costco app does not seem to replace the card. And what happened when was I was looking into this wallet and I was trying to moving things over, I realized how many of the things I was carrying around in my wallet I really didn't need because for almost all of them, there was an app for that. And that's to me, is really interesting how the, how the whole act of consumption has changed and, and making some, all these things that we used to carry around, even the key fobs now we carry around, you don't need those anymore. You can pretty much put everything onto your smartphone and you're carrying that around with you anyway, and it makes life so much simpler. And, you know, it's not even hard to imagine that the cards that I have in here now, many of these are going to get replaced, probably by, you know, biometrics or some other technology that I'm not really smart enough to think about. And one of the things that occurs to me is how both parts of this experience, the whole notion of A, ordering something before it was being made, which made me feel sort of invested in the process, and then the other side of it where I'm basically committed to using companies where I have their app on my smartphone really engenders loyalty. It engenders a kind of connection that is really, really smart And when retailers are able to use it to kind of strengthen the connection, to really connect to the customer in fundamental ways. Now, a lot, listen, a lot of retailers aren't necessarily going to do that, but they should because I've indicated the interest, okay? And they really should be using these tools as a way of connecting to me in the, to the, as the customer in much more fundamental ways. Anyway, that's what's on my mind this Thursday morning. And as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.